Today we're talking about uh, assembly items in Sage 50's inventory. Uh, an assembly item is basically an inventory item that's made up of other components. As you can see here in the sample company, we've got a birdhouse kit, and it's made up of a birdhouse pole and a red 12-room uh, birdhouse. So um, that's the, the basic idea of assemblies, and they're they're a lot like stock items in that Sage 50 will track your cost, it'll track your quantities. Um, but they're different in that, one, they have a bill of materials, and two, they have to be built instead of being purchased. So let's take a look at setting up a new assembly item. So, of course, I'm in Maintain Inventory Items here, and we'll just put in a uh, an ID, and then a description. and the item class. The item class is very important. Uh, once you've saved your, your new item, you can't change the class on it. And so we want to make sure this is set to assembly, or if you needed to track serial numbers for your assembled products, you could choose serialized assembly. Put that in there. The rest of the general tab, um, you, would, you would handle exactly the same way you would a stock item. So I'm not going to take time to, to go over those fields. We're going to jump over here to the Bill of Materials tab. So this is where we start telling it what components make up this um, this assembly or this finished good. So we'll uh, we'll grab a couple things to put um, put in our our assembly. Um, let's see here. We'll grab a uh, spreader and then we put in a quantity. And then we'll put some fertilizer in with that too. And you can keep going, you know, adding as many things as you need to build your list. You can even add um, labor. You can do uh, stock, non-stock, service, labor, even other assembly items. Um, I'll throw a little bit of labor on there. Um, if you do assembly items uh, as components of another assembly, so that would be if you're doing sub-assemblies, you need to keep in mind that when you're building your assembly, you have to have enough of every component on hand, or it won't let you complete the build. So um, another way of saying that is that Sage 50 will not auto-build sub-assemblies for you. So if you're doing sub-assemblies, you've got to do the build on the subs first, and then you can come back and do the build for the final assembly. All right, so I'm going to save that. Um, oh, another thing to note too is that if you um, if you discover that there's a new component that's not on your item list yet, uh, you can save this and come back to it and, and add you know, add the new component. Just make sure that no transactions get entered for the assembly, um, you know, while you're while you're going and adding that other component. Because once transactions are linked to this assembly, then then the bill materials is locked down. You can't change it. Um, one other thing, too, there is an option down here to print components on invoice. If you want the customer to see all the components that go into that, check that box. Otherwise, leave it blank, and the assembly item will, will print just like any other normal inventory item would. So let's save that, and let's go and take a look at how to build your assemblies. I'm going to go to the task menu, and down here, which is just getting cut off from your view, I'm going to choose assemblies. is right below work tickets. And we get a fairly simple screen here, and we'll choose the test item that we just created. The date is important because that's the date that the components are going to be relieved from inventory, and the finished good is going to be placed into inventory. And next you choose your action, which most times is going to be build, but if you need to disassemble something and put the components back into inventory, you can unbuild. And we'll put in a quantity. And you can see that as we enter a quantity, it's going to update the bottom half of the screen. So it shows the quantity required for the number that we want to build. And then it also shows the quantity that we have on hand. So if I change my build quantity, the requirements get updated along the way. Now if I put in, um, say if we say we want to build 10, now we can see that here the... Uh, the quantity on the spreader is changed to red. That's telling us that we don't have enough on hand 
um, of that component in order to build the number of assemblies that we want to build. So you've got two choices. You can either decrease the number that you're building, or you could close this um, and then go and make corrections to your inventory. There are times when, you know, maybe if your Sage 50 inventory is off, you know you have those components on hand because they're out there building, you know, the, the goods right now. Um, then you would either, you'd still close this, you'd either do an inventory adjustment or you'd go and look and see if there's maybe a purchase transaction that hasn't been recorded yet. That you'd have to go and correct your inventory. Then you could come back in here and uh, and complete your build. All right, I'm going to close that without saving it. And then we're going to talk about the other way that you can build assemblies. And that is through work tickets right here. So a work ticket accomplishes the same thing as a build transaction. But it gives you um, two things. One, it gives you a document that you could print out and maybe send out to your, your production floor um, so they know what they need to build. Um, it also gives you a place where you can try to track your progress a little bit. So let's put our assembly test item in here. Again, the date is the date that, that uh, this is going to hit your inventory. Uh, the work ticket number will increment automatically. You can override it if you want. Then you put in the quantity that you want to build. And so, just like in the build window, you can see it tells us how many we have required, um, you know, what's, uh, what, and what's available, what's on hand. Now, you can, uh, you can print this out if you want. We'll preview that. Then you can see what the basic work ticket looks like. Um, then, uh, if you want to, you can come in here and you can keep track of which items are finished. Um, you can also add, you know, keep track of how many hours of labor if you're if you're if you're doing that. Um, but the important thing to remember is that these things are just to help you keep track of where you are. They they have no effect on your books at all. So, for example, when I you know say that. Uh, this first one is finished. It is not pulling this drop spreader out of inventory when I click the finish box. Uh, no inventory, no general ledger will be af affected until I close this ticket. And same thing here with the labor. Um, when I'm putting hours on here, um, the number of hours that I put over here does not affect how many, you know, the, how much labor cost is actually going to get um, applied to this item. It is strictly going to go by the bill of materials. So um, then once this item has been built, then you would come back in here, click the open button to pull up this, uh, this work ticket again, and then you can mark it as closed. When you close the ticket, that's what actually builds the item. So let me save that. And then we'll go back to maintain inventory items, and we'll take a look at, at our assembly item again. You can see that now we have uh, two on hand, two available. Let's go back to our bill of materials. You can see everything here is grayed out, um, so I cannot make changes to this anymore. And now, if you're using Sage 50 Premium, then there's no way at all to edit this bill of materials. If your bill of materials changes, you have to uh, copy this to a new item, and then uh, you know, then you could you could start over on the bill of materials with a new item. Um, everything would show up there, but since there aren't transactions linked to it yet, you could um, you could edit that bill of materials. However, in Quantum, you have the ability to make revisions, um, and revisions are all tracked. You can see the original the original BOM will always be revision zero. Let's click the new button here to create a new revision, and you can see that the the previous bill materials is copied onto here. You can make whatever changes you uh, you need to. Um, we can change out a component. Uh, you could add things. You can uh, you can move them up and down. Whatever you need to do. And then uh, make a note if you want. The important other really important field though is its effective date. Um, any transactions that um, that are you know, before this date 
will use the previous revision. Anything on or after this date will use this revision. So, you know, if you know you have some changes coming down the road, maybe you know that at the beginning of the next month, you're going to um, swap out one of the components and start building this differently. Then you can go ahead and put that revision in ahead of time, and it won't cause any, any problems, any interference. So we can save that. And now you can see we have a new revision here on our, on our revision list. And we'll close that to go back to our, our main screen. So you can see that this is a, a, a powerful tool. It does have some limitations. You know, if your bill of materials change frequently, even constantly, then it's not going to be the uh, you know a, a really good solution for you. Like so, if you're doing custom builds, or if you give the customers of choosing from from multiple options, you're not going to want to come in and create a new revision every time you you build an item again. But if you build the same things in the same way over and over again then the assembly feature is going to be a really powerful tool to help you manage your inventory properly in Sage 50.